Got him. I felt that hit. That's a good fish too. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> That's a good one, folks. <laughs> Look at that fish, that smallmouth bass. Come on. Get in here, Moby. Oh, come on, oh! <laughs> Guess I should have brought the net with these monsters. Catch and release. <laughs> That's what happens when you mess with them too much. I should have brought the net. Folks, today we're at Lake Havasu. And I'll tell you what, I love this lake, man. We are in for a treat today. The only thing is, is we're here in the end of March. And, uh, there's a little algae bloom going on, so it's tough to see. And uh, so reaction baits are doing well. It's just I happen to see, again, I've always, I've always told folks this on my show, you got to make sure you got a good pair of polarized sunglasses. That's first and foremost on your list when you get out and fish. Not even if you're not trying to look in the water. But remember, anytime you're making casts, if you got other folks in the boat, you don't want hooks in the eyes, always wear some kind of eye protection. First and foremost, plus it's good, you know, you don't want to hurt your corneas or anything like that. Wear a good pair of polarized sunglasses. I happened to just be throwing a little swim bait through there, and uh, I happened to look down and see a little black spot. Even though the water's dingy and dirty right now from the, from the algae bloom, I happened to see just enough of a dark spot to think that, hey, maybe there's something there. Threw up in there and thwink, there he was. So. You know, you definitely want to make sure that you have a good pair of polarized sunglasses so you can see things like that. We're here in March. We understand the fish will probably be shallow. With that algae bloom, we got to find coves. we got to find areas that maybe it's not so uh, algae bloomed up. And there are areas on this lake that are a little bit clearer than others. So, you know, uh, we can go down the bank, have a lot of fun, throw some reaction, you know, but stay shallow. That's the ticket today. <laughs> My drag set a little bit too loose for sure, but there was one right there in those reeds. That is not a big fish, but it's a largemouth. Come here, bud. Uh, little largemouth bass. Let's see if I can get that hook out of here. Little largemouth right there. I'll tell you what, folks, here's the deal. <laughs> You start moving back into these uh, tulies, and, and, and I'll tell you what, that's basically where the largemouth will be hanging out. And then if you stay out here on the main lake points, things like this, that's where you're gonna find the smallies in the rocks. So it's kind of really fun about the fishing here at Havasu, is you get yourself back in the backs of these cuts and stuff where you have all these tulies and, and things like that, and you're gonna, you're gonna find some largemouth back there. And a lot of big largemouth like to hang out in there. That's why I like to throw uh, a Cinco back in there, you know, just a weightless Cinco when they're up shallow like that. I'm throwing this one, this particular one's just a little four inch watermelon Cinco. And I, what I do is I rig it up weedless. I use a little three out wide gap hook. I'm using 12 pound line because the, the way the, I was gonna go with a 10 pound leader, but because the water's not clear, I went with 12 just in case I hook something good in there. And I've got my 12 Nanofill on right here so I, so I can see the fish actually hit the bait. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm just throwing that, that, that Cinco back in there. When I get to these areas like this, you gotta take a couple of pops back there, you know? Just to see if there's anything back there worthy. One of the things I like to do when I get back here to the Thule's, and I think something that's real important is a lot of guys will just fish the main, the main you can see right here, the, just the main channel of the Thule's here, and they won't get back in that real shallow water. Now, it, it's probably less than a foot of water back there, but you never know if something big is is setting up back there. They don't get touched much back there, so that's one of the reasons I like to throw back there. You just never know what might be back there. I know last year when we were here doing the Bass Pro Open, uh, Andrew, you know, threw back there with a swim bait, caught a four pounder. So you always gotta check, you know, and just see if anything's back there. 
Got him. Oh my goodness, that's a, a giant smallmouth. <laughs> Look at that fish, folks. Oh my goodness. Oh, that is a giant, giant smallmouth. <laughs> he didn't like that scorpion. Okay, come on. Oh, oh, I had him and I lost him. Come on, not again. Ah, gotcha. Look at the size of that smallmouth. That's almost four pounds right there. That's a big fish. Look at that. Folks, I gotta let it go. See you, bud. You fish shallow water like that, you catch fish like that. <laughs> Came around from the Tule's, and I'm working my swim bait along the rim. And what I mean along the rim of the, the drop off, basically. And as far as I can see, and then there's a little drop off, so I can see up shallow and see if I want to throw at anything. And then I can also work out deeper. And I'm just kind of paralleling. And I was coming down the bank, and wow, hit that. Now, I haven't caught any fish on that little swim bait yet. It's a little Kitek swim bait I'm throwing, but it's a great little search lure because a lot of times you'll have fish just run out and look at it, and you can see them. And if that happens, then you can throw back in there with your drop shot, and you normally catch them. It's a great one-two punch. So that's what had happened was I was reeling that in, and I'm like, hey, there's something big following it, you know? And threw back in there with a drop shot and caught him. I'm telling you. <laughs> Monster bass here at Lake Havasu. I love it. What I'm throwing on this drop shot rig is just that, that quail tail, and it's in the scorpion color. And man, I'm telling you, they eat that color up. I've had a lot of good success on it lately, so it's been, been having a lot of fun with it. Boy, he's got it all twisted up. I'm going to have to put a new worm on. But that's the worm. It's got a little red flake in it. It's a light, light uh, brown color, you know? Little red flake, I love it. Looks really glows good in the water. Really glows good. All right, we'll see what we can't do. Catch us another fish. I pick up basically where I left off and keep working down the bank. And again, if you're throwing a jerk bait, you're throwing a crank bait, you're throwing a swim bait, whatever you're throwing, you have something follow it. Don't leave it to chance. Don't 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 throw back out there with your swim bait a lot of times or your crank bait or whatever again. Because if they're just following it, maybe you need to throw something like a a drop shot and make sure you get it way out in front of the fish. When you see the fish turn, throw way out in front of the fish and that way he can run right over there and grab it. Got it. Right under the boat. Oh, that's a good fish. <laughs> Look at that smallmouth, folks. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about right there, son. That's a big fish. Big fish. My goodness, there are some giant smallmouths in this lake. That's all I gotta say. Look at that fish. He's trying to dive down there. That's another four plus pound bass. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on. Let me touch you, let me touch you. You gotta let these smallies fight out a little bit. That's why you got your drag. When he turns, you want him to be able to take that drag, without a doubt. Yeah, look at that fish, folks. That's a four plus pound smallie. <laughs> On that quail tail. Look at that. Let him go. Let him go. <laughs> it is so fun when you're reeling that swimming bait and you see something follow it. I have yet to get them to strike on it. Might put a little chartreuse on the tail, I don't know. I gotta figure it out, but um, whew, that is fun. That little coil tail gets the job done now, let me tell you. Awesome bait. Don't tell me. Drop shots don't catch big bass, let me tell you. <laughs> Use it in the right situation, you'll catch a lot of big fish. You know, you could probably throw a jig in there. You could probably, I have the confidence with this because it falls so naturally. It's something natural, I like it. You, you might be able to back it up with a jig, a Texas rig worm, whatever you want to do, you know, whatever you feel confident in. But I'm telling you right now, this works for me. So it's hard for me to swap, you know? I was always told when I was young, don't ever fix something that ain't broke. So I don't, I don't, I try to tend to keep everything a little bit more simplified in my fishing to make it easier on me. 
and I'm hoping it helps you. Whoo, man, that was a big fish. Now see, I'm back to my swimming. You know, if I see them pop up or if I see a little a boil or something, I'll, I'll run over there and, and drop. You know, what I'm throwing on this particular bait is a 10 pound test line too. I, you don't normally go with as light as line as I can. Of course, on the drop shot, I'm always six pound. Always six pound on the drop shot if I can get away with it, uh, unless I'm in big thick trees or something like that. But uh, with this particular bait, it's a medium action rod and I'm, I'm throwing a, that three aught hook on there. It's the little dipper and uh, we had a lot of success on this bait here in the past. Uh, and I'm thinking that algae bloom is what's keeping me from getting really whacked on it right now. But I put it, I went up to 10 pound test. I was throwing eight, but I went up to 10 thinking with this algae, it's not going to matter. And I want to be able to catch fish like that and get them out of places. And then uh, I'm kind of one tuning it up a little bit with my, you got to have that Cinco ready at the gun waiting. That was fun. This lake offers a lot, I mean a lot. This is very unusual for us to come here and see all this algae bloom. I love real clear water and uh, it's very unusual for us to, to come here and see this kind of bloom. But you know what, it happens at my lake, it happens you know, on other lakes that I've been on, so this is not unusual for it to happen, I'm sure, but uh, it kind of hampers you trying to look in the water so much, you gotta cast a lot, you know? Oh, got him. There's a large mouth right there. Oh, he got up underneath the tree on me. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> the large mouth are hanging back, but they're not very big right through here. Doesn't seem like anyway, he hit it. That was a Cinco Bez. Came back in, you know, we're just basically covering lots of water. And when you're covering lots of water, you know, you gotta have a, you know, your, your line set up for whatever you're throwing at. So, you know, that's why I got a few rods here on the deck. I'm, I'm wanting to uh, just try all these areas and see where some of these, I'd love to see if we can catch a big largemouth out of these reeds. I mean, I know they gotta be here. Like I said, you get out there on those points and you catch them, you know, you catch those small mouth and then you get back here where the reeds are and you got a good shot at catching a big largemouth bass, you know, throw, throw something in those reeds. Just a, I'm throwing a weight list because I mean, we're in three feet of water or two feet of water at best in these reeds. And so I'm just throwing something kind of weightless up there. And if he's hanging in there, you know, hopefully we'll catch him. Caught him on the point right here off the weed, off the reed line. But I, I just throw to all the pockets and try to make your cast count, you know, just work it real slow. Got him. I saw him swim out with it. <laughs> <laughs> Little jig fish. See, you can catch them on those jigs. <laughs> he ain't going nowhere this time. I got a good line on this. There we go. Come on, buddy. Not a real big small mouth, but a two pounder. Close to it. Oh, come on, chunker. He's a chunk. It's got to be the cookies. <laughs> Open your mouth. Sheesh. <laughs> Look at his hunchback. Look at that little hunchback, dude. Beautiful fish. Beautiful little fish. Picked up a jig, started throwing it through here. See this algae, look at that way this algae just lays on top of the water here in this cut. Just lays on top of it. So if you think there's anything in the neighborhood, you know, you can uh, either drop shot it or jig it. I thought I'd drag that jig across and just see. <clears throat> you know, there's no secrets to springtime fishing. The bottom line is, is you just gotta get shallow. You know, everybody asks me, well, what depth of water? I mean, you just gotta get shallow from zero to you know, 15 foot of water. I mean, it's, there's, there's times when I'm actually dragging up mud with the, with the trolling motor and sometimes the trolling motor is, is too deep and I have to raise the trolling motor up to get to some of these fish, you know? Hey folks, for my tip of the week, one thing that's really important about the springtime fishing, especially if you like to hunt for those, those fish that are moving up shallow and, and getting ready to make beds, things like that, is 
the points is usually the last place that they, they move up. They'll move back in the pockets first, and it's almost like towards the latter part of the, the spawn and all that stuff, you can get out on the points, and, and sometimes those fish will be hanging out there on those points and making beds, because a little cooler water out there versus back in the cove. You'll see a three to four degree difference in uh, water temp a lot of times when you get back into a little bit muddier water back in the cuts or something where the big large mouth are versus out there on the on the uh, shallow shelves or whatever on the point. So, you know, that, just that little tip right there will help you. It'll help prolong the uh, fish and shallow thing because so many people get out on those deep point or those long points and they fish just the bluffs, the, 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 the part where it actually just falls off and uh, the drop offs on those points. Get up shallow in two foot of water and you'd be surprised this time of year what you'll find. Got him. Oh, it's a big smallmouth. Yeah, that's one. That's a jig fish there, baby. <laughs> Look at that. He tore my thing up right there. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, buddy. That's a good one. That's a good smallmouth right there. Nice smallmouth. Nice smallmouth. Beautiful Lake Anvisu bass. Oh, he clobbered it. Look where my look where my jig's at. All the way down in his mouth like that. I barely had him up. Look at there. Looking fish. Folks, I'm telling you. <laughs> I ain't got nothing left. Look, I tell you what, when the sun pops out and you can, you can just put yourself right on the line of where you can see the shallow shelf and the deeper shelf, sometimes those bigger fish will be hanging right off those shelves. So I take in parallel and I throw that jig or, or whatever bait you want to throw, but I'm, I'm throwing the jig. Throw that jig right up there and just kind of hop it along and uh, he clobbered it right off the ledge, right off the ledge. You know, a lot of times you'll have your males move up and spawn, your, your bigger fish will hang out off that little ledge and uh, just waiting to move up, you know? So that, that's fun, that is so much fun to do. <laughs> he come out of nowhere, man. He come out of nowhere. <laughs> There's a good two pound smallie. Lee canvas you bass. Come on, baby. Come on. Oh. No. Oh. I'm having more problems. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't done yet. As soon as he got to the boat, he started fighting. Ah! Look at that, folks. Tell you what, it's a beautiful Lake Havasu bass right there. Get that out of there. There we go. Look at there. Beautiful fish. Love it. Folks, you've got to come try Lake Havasu out. It's a blast during the spring. Stay shallow. Remember, if you get on the rocky points, you'll find some fish. If you get back in the cuts, you'll find some of those largemouth. Out here, you're gonna find some of them smallmouth. You'll have a blast. Just stay shallow and you'll have a good time right here at Lake Havasu. Come try it. Till next week, I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs>